but for, for a lot of them, that, that, uh, that abuse and that violence that they went through, they thought it was normal. Every answer is smash them over, smash them over. We're heading out to Mangere to meet the president of Black Power Auckland and also a member of the King Cobras gang to understand how state abuse impacted their lives and led them into gang life in New Zealand. Fete Taito, a former member of the King Cobras, became a ward of the state at 13. Violence quickly became a way of life. There was what was known as Sunday boxing at the recreation room at O Wairaka Boys Home. Fete was ordered to beat up other boys who had misbehaved during the week. The housemasters would watch. No gloves, just your fists. You'd smash them up? Yeah, you had to. Did you feel like it was entertainment for... Yeah, of course it was entertainment. Looking back at it, at the time, it was for survival. It was either that kid or me. <laughs> you know? But looking back at it, they're sitting there enjoying it all. They encourage that violence. Yes, of course they encourage it. Yes, they encourage it all the time. Prejudice also shaped his experience. As a boy, he felt confused by remarks from his social worker when he asked for a chit to see a dentist. And she wrote it to me and gave it to me. She goes, the trouble with you fellas, with you people, is that you just don't know how to use uh, your toothbrushes. And my head was like, I don't even know what they mean. What does that mean? <laughs> I use a toothbrush. <laughs> <laughs> Other things just didn't feel right, like his housemaster trying to dry the boys when they got out of the shower. You, you stand there and you watch this this white man with a towel open saying, come in, and you walk out of the shower. You know something's wrong here. This is Pooks, the president of Black Power Auckland, Aotearoa. His dad was Black Power, he's Black Power, he knows gang life. Wrap around Aloha sense of belonging. I'm not saying that that wasn't happening at home, because it was. But, uh, you know, yeah, you know, you just felt uh, secure. He didn't spend time in state care, but his wife did, and so did many of his bros. In fact, the Waitangi Tribunal estimates up to 90% of black power gang whānau spent time in state care. If you want a functional society, if you want functional people, knowing that these things happen, then you've got to put measures in place for them to heal so that they can become functional. So why get advice from a leader of a group police say has links to organised crime? People will, people will always have their views on us. If you're going to judge me, judge me by my works. People know that Black Power is an organised crime group. I, I, think, I think that's both eh? organised crime group. Yeah, it's like in, in any walk of life, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, there's that basic saying, you know, because of uh, one bag egg, you know, you, 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 you paint us all with the same bloody brush. I don't think that's a fair, fair, fair picture of, of, of us as people. I don't belong to a criminal organisation. I belong to the Black Power, to my family. Family was what Fetty was looking for, and when he became too old for state care, he found it in a gang. And at what age did you join the King Cobras? 16, 20, 17. Yeah. So the environment we felt, I felt comf more comfortable in is with, yeah, the brothers. He eventually graduated to jail. You, you led a raid on the skinheads? A little bit, yeah, 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 yeah it was. Yeah. And what happened? Um, a couple of boys got, of their boys got put in the coma and I got put into jail. Meth addiction followed. The, the point is, is that it got me. How long did it get it get oh, you for? Oh, Ten years. And you were using a lot? Yeah. Every day? Yeah. I wake up to it. And what impact did that have on your family? Yeah, the impact on the family was, was, was great. It was so great that, yeah, I had to, had to make a choice. That choice was to get off P and get away from anything and anyone who could tempt him back to the pipe. Like Fete, Pooks has had brushes with the law. He did time for a home invasion. Are you still involved in home invasions and violence? Oh, hell no. 
that ain't happening now. That ain't happening now. Yeah. Now, he's leading Wananga like this at Matai Fitu Marai in the Coromandel to help Fano talk about abuse and heal. You know, the old, the old adage, you know, through the years, we saw, well, shut your mouth and harden up. You know, they, they, they may have worked for some, but for the majority, well, obviously, mm -hmm. my sisters, they don't work. It don't work. I mean, uh, pain is pain, trauma is trauma. Like I said, we have a lot of young, young bros. We have a lot of older bros too. So it's open to them all. Masculine vulner vulnerability. There's nothing wrong with it, but At an unprecedented hui last year, gang members from a variety of groups united to hear stories of state abuse. The outcome was a joint submission by Gang Fano sent to the Royal Commission. This submission, obtained exclusively by the Herald, details the harrowing abuse endured by gang Fano in state and church care. It details allegations of rape and sadistic violence against young men and young women, and sets out how that start to life became a gateway to criminal offending. The Commission releases its final report publicly on Wednesday. What do you want to see? What do you want to hear? Uh, justice, justice, proper measures put in place to look after our people, those that are, that, that are damaged. Like I said, you can't put any, a, a time frame on things when it comes to trauma and pain and healing and all those sort of things. It takes as long as it takes. Yeah, yeah but you know, the, 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 the right measures put in place, you know, the, the, the full wraparound, you know, not just, uh, not just financial shut up money. It needs to be fair, it needs to be inclusive and it needs to, to accommodate a variety of services. Resources like counselling and scholarships for children, but they say such services can't all be controlled by the state. And if some of our people don't like that type of counselling, some people can just I can sit down with a, a survivor from a gay father and we can talk. And then over a period of time, you build their trust and they'll tell you what the problem is. But a lot of our whanau work with each other. That's how you get past, that's how you heal them.